Today, we're going to talk about a special program that caters to those working on the front lines of the COVID-19 crisis. And joining me now is the president and CEO of the Hawaii Lodging and Tourism Association, Mufi Hanneman. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Mufi. Good morning and uh, happy Easter weekend. Happy Easter weekend. And, you know, we're talking about these frontline workers that are really scared about their, you know, their health and protecting their families. Now, this program that you've been talking about, Hotels for Heroes, tell us about how it's going. I know you started it this week. Yes, uh, it's going very well. Uh, the interest in the program has been fantastic across the board. And of course, it's for our healthcare community, uh, first and foremost. But we also wanted to recognize uh, and uh, uh, bring into uh, this program our first responders and our law enforcement officials. So that's our police, our firefighters, our EMS, our paramedics, and then of course the state law enforcement officials. So like any new program, it takes a while to educate people exactly what this program is all about. Uh, so they've been spending a lot of time in doing that, but uh, over 650 people have signed up in the first four days uh, because they go through a point of contact with the respective uh, organizations that I've talked about. Most of them are coming from the healthcare community. So the basic thing is this, if you are working uh, and feel uneasy about going home that evening uh, or uh, because of your exposure day in and day out and you need a place to stay outside of your home because you're worried about uh, the interaction with your family and especially if you have Kupuna there, uh, we're saying come and stay in one of 35 hotels uh, that are uh, basically ready and positioned to welcome you. On the other hand, we wanna make sure that our employees at the hotels are also gonna feel uh, safe uh, in this environment. So uh, we're saying uh, obviously that um, we want folks to come there uh, who have not tested positive for COVID-19, uh, obviously, and secondly, are still working uh, because that tells us that they're healthy enough. And if you are asked to stay at home uh, because you're ill and, and not healthy, then uh, this program does not open itself up to you. You need to quarantine at home uh, as opposed uh, to uh, our hotels because you're going to be treated uh, in self-isolation when you come in. We're going to basically uh, put you in a room. We have some wonderful sponsors that have stepped up to the plate starting next week. Domino's Pizza Hawaii uh, is going to serve pizza uh, to uh, all those that are participating in the program. Uh, They'll be uh, ordering it uh, online and it gives them an opportunity to have that pizza. Um, no, nothing will be exchanged in terms of human interaction. If you will, just be placed at the door. They open the door and they take the pizza. Uh, Hawaiian uh, Paradise Coffee is also making coffee available. Enterprise Rent-A-Car uh, for those that need a car uh, to travel around uh, if they need to. Uh, for example, doctors that went to Maui uh, recently with Dr. Miskovich, uh, Enterprise provided the vans for them to travel because they were there uh, to test the folks, at, uh, especially at Maui Memorial Hospital. So we're getting a tremendous response and reaction and uh, can't say enough about our partners, Hawaii Tourism Authority that provided the state funding with tourism dollars, and of course the Hawaii Visitors and Convention Bureau. Well, let's talk about, like you said, there's so many pe moving parts to this. I know you mentioned that the workers at the hotels themselves also have to be protected. How did you go about and choose the hotels that participate? Now, are they vetted? Are they, these are hotels that had full staffs or how did you go about choosing those hotels? Well, first of all, you have to be operating. There are uh, many of our hotels have decided to shutter. Uh, and understandably so. And then there are others that are still open for a variety of reasons. They may have uh, to honor uh, existing uh, contractual arrangements, whether it's with flight crews that need to come into town and life or be open for emergency situations uh, like this. So um, that was the first criteria. And then secondly, they had to want to do it. We didn't say to them that they had to do it. And so 35 of them or so stepped forward and said, okay, we're prepared, uh, we're ready because We've been practicing quarantine uh, policies uh, for a long time now. You know, the governor put it into place on March 26th. But we really stepped up our game uh, and we're uh, instituting practice of cleanliness, sanitary conditions, because we want to know and feel, uh, we want our hardworking employees to feel that uh, we're not going to jeopardize their health uh, as they're working. So it's a very skeletal screw uh, uh, crew. Uh, that is involved 
uh, in terms of uh, the manpower, but you know, we do need people there, whether it's security folks, whether folks that are checking uh, the limited uh, people that come there. And in this particular case, uh, our heroes uh, who are taking advantage of this program. Mm -hmm. And as we've seen with any new program rollout, there's going to be hiccups, there's going to be bumps, and I know there was some confusion as to who was eligible to be part of this. Uh, you touched on it a little bit about whether someone needed to be tested already to, and which jobs were uh, actual uh, eligible for this. Can you clarify all of that for us? Yes. So, so once again, you have to be working. And, and if you're working, uh, we're saying uh, because you don't feel comfortable about going home, you feel uneasy uh, because of what you've been doing in the course of the day, then this program is for you. Uh, if you are not working uh, and you need to self-quarantine at home, uh, we're kind of drawing the line there, if you will, because um, we only have a limited number of rooms uh, based on the funding. I also mentioned the fact that we want to make sure our workers uh, who are at the hotels also have a sense of ease and, and, and feel confident, comfortable that during the course of their work, they're not going to get exposed. Uh, so uh, our criteria is if you're working, uh, you can come uh, and take advantage. But if you're not working and you're told to quarantine uh, because you're sick and demonstrating uh, or indicating that you're not well, um, then you need to quarantine at home. Well, they have to have had hotel. testing. Well, if you're being tested, that means you should uh, be at home uh, during that period. And therefore, uh, we are not going to uh, welcome, uh, I should say, you're not going to be part of the program because you are being tested during the index day that you may have it. So these are for folks that don't have it, but they feel uh, uneasy. They, they feel that uh, because of the constant exposure and so forth, but they're not showing any indications that they may have it. They're not coughing a lot. They're not feeling... Uh, they're not having headaches. All the things that uh, they indicate that uh, you might be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. uh, that's where uh, the confusion sometimes is coming in from folks that say, oh, rather than home and quarantining for 14 days, I want to go and quarantine at the hotel for 14 mm, days. I uh, see. So it's, it's not meant for that kind of situation. It's for people who are a day, uh, an evening, I should say, a night or two, uh, and uh, just want to separate a little bit till they feel uh, that they're okay and then they can go now keep in mind there's so many organizations that are involved so um, the program runs to may 3rd so there's a limited number of rooms uh, that we can uh, basically allocate more of them most of them have been uh, basically uh, distributed uh, to the uh, healthcare community that's where most of the need has been felt the doctors and nurses yeah, I was going to ask you about that. So I know we had some people mention that if they were lab techs or per people that weren't necessarily actual doctors and nurses, uh, they weren't el eligible. Is that true too? No, no. Uh, once again, uh, the Hawaii Lodging and Tourism Association or Hawaii Tourism Authority, HVCB, we're not involved in uh, prioritizing which employees from that particular hotel, uh, excuse me, from that particular hospital, uh, or medical organization uh, should be uh, led into uh, this program. We have a point of contact uh, at each of these places, so whether it's Queens Hospital and now Kaiser's a part of it, whether it's Kaiser's Hospital, you have a point of contact. You go first to that point of contact, who's an employee at that hospital, they in turn will contact Healthcare Association of Hawaii. Uh, and there's a point of contact there, they get the names and they then uh, will call uh, our housing bureau that's set up at the Hawaii Visitors and Convention Bureau, and that's how the determination is made. So it's within those institutions that prioritize the need based on the fact that there's a certain number of rooms. So there's some confusion there. They think that we're making the decision. We're not. It's made at that level where they are employed. So once ah. you get on that list, they in turn will prioritize or figure out how many rooms for this person, that person, and it's a statewide program. So you take Queens, uh, they have uh, institutions all throughout the state. Everybody knows about the Queens here uh, in downtown Honolulu, but they're on West Oahu. They also have a presence on uh, Hawaii Island. Uh, so it's, it's all of that, and they have a certain number of uh, allocations. And every uh, island has, uh, is part of this, Kauai, yes, Maui? Yes, every island, every island. So it's a mammoth program, and the same goes for police officers, firefighters, uh, those decisions are made on that island that they reside in. 
So if you are an HPD officer, there's a point of contact here uh, at, uh, at the Honolulu Police Department. They're working through their union, SHOPO, is now the point of contact for police officers here. Uh, on Maui, for example, uh, Chief Faumu uh, has a lieutenant, Lieutenant Sellers, who's the point of contact for the Maui Police Department. And they've, uh, they've taken advantage of the program. Last time I checked, there were a dozen of them that already signed up uh, from the Maui Police Department to take advantage of this program here. So that's how it, you need to go to your place of employment and everybody has a point of contact. And that point of contact then funnels those names through um, to the Hawaii Visitors and Convention Bureau, and then they make the reservations. And you said uh, at least 650 people now have applied. At least 650 Are you going to expand Thursday. that? Are you going to uh, expand well, that? Well, it's 650 based on the reservations. Come, yes, uh, we're going to expand that. And it, once again, it all comes from those who are making the reservations itself. I know, for example, the healthcare uh, association had run out of rooms because everybody had reserved a certain number. But then they have to determine now who's going to get it. And then if it's this week, they want to use those rooms or next week. The program goes from April 6th to May 3rd. And when they, um, uh, we all got that uh, notice that Maui Memorial Hospital had tested positive. Mm -hmm. Some of the employees there, 15 employees uh, initially were affected. Uh, they didn't have any more rooms to allocate. This is the healthcare sector. Uh, so thanks to Chris Tatum and the White Tourism Authority, uh, they stepped up and provided some additional funding so that we could take care of that immediate need. So now uh, Maui Memorial Hospital, very grateful, according to the um, Healthcare Association for Hawaii, for being able to have uh, that extra allocation to take care of the Maui situation. And when Kaiser Hospital missed the deadline uh, for applying uh, for the program, they were the only hospital that was left out, but there were a series of employees that were coming directly to us uh, and so we would say to them, well, you need to go back to Kaiser. When it was apparent that was happening, Health Care Association of Hawaii was able to reallocate some rooms that were assigned to them that some of these folks, out of the goodness of the heart, said, you know, we're not going to be able to use our full allocation. We want to put it back in the pool. And because of that, Health Care Association then was, to, was able to tell Kaiser, look, if you folks want to opt in, because thus far you haven't said so, um, here are rooms for you to now use for your employees. That's good news because I know a lot of people were concerned about, about that for sure. Now, I know this could go on. Who knows the end? I know they're hoping April 30th um, it would flatten the curve by then. But is there room to extend this perhaps? Yeah. Well, uh, my, uh, uh, our close relationship with the Hawaii Tourism Authority and uh, Chris Tatum, uh, he's mindful of the fact that it may happen. As I said, we, uh, he was able to free up. Uh, some more funding so that we we're able to take care of the Maui Moro situation. So I think it's, a, it's an opportunity to assess where we are as we get closer to May 3rd. But we do know uh, that uh, there's still more organizations that are still trying to figure out how to do this. Uh, and therefore, uh, the week that has gone by, we expect the 650 number to increase dramatically next week. So what I'm saying is that there could be opportunities within the existing pool of rooms uh, that we could take in more people. Uh, there's always uh, folks thinking too that maybe we could expand it to other areas, other needs uh, at this time, other worthy needs. But, you know, we don't have uh, a whole lot of hotel rooms that are open. And so we mm -hmm. thought immediately what should be addressed uh, is the healthcare folks that are there each and every day on the front lines, as well as our public safety and law enforcement folks. If it continues to persist, and we're hoping it doesn't, but if it gets worse, then Obviously, it's an opportunity for HTA ourselves and HVCB to kind of sit down and see where we are. Uh, mm -hmm. Governor Ige has been very supportive of this program. Uh, and I know the mayors on the various islands, Mayor Caldwell has also uh, expressed appreciation for this program. Uh, and so we're trying to do what we need to do. We're also in consultation with Lieutenant Governor Green. Everybody kind of knows what's going on. And they're very grateful that the hospitality industry has stepped up. And our hotels are willing to do this because they could be saying, you know what, we're closed. Uh, we're not going to do this. And besides, you're asking us to go into a gray area. What we're trying to do here is demonstrate that we care about this community. We're here for the long haul, the long run. And there's a void now that we can fill. And uh, fortunately, with some state funding that is set aside for tourism, uh, we were able to reallocate those do dollars thanks to the support of state government and Hawaii Tourism Authority.
Yeah, much needed uh, resource for sure. Now, I wanted to ask you, worst case scenario, have you been in talks and trying to see whether our hotels could be eventually converted to, say, quarantine areas should this pandemic get worse and our hospitals get overcrowded? Is there a possibility of that? Well, that would not be a decision that would come from the industry. Uh, it would basically come from state government uh, and HIEMA. Uh, and the Department of Health. So we know that they are looking uh, for that possibility to occur where they might uh, ask a hotel to be designated uh, for those kind of purposes uh, or even uh, housing uh, COVID-19 patients. So, uh, and that would come from them as the quarterback uh, of this whole effort. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, we're, we're here to do what we can do. Uh, and obviously if government should dictate certain things, uh, we also need to follow the law, and that's what we will do. That's exactly what we've done with the quarantine policy of telling everyone who comes through our doors that the hotels are open, you are to be quarantined for 14 days. So you still want to stay here. Uh, you actually bring here, you actually bring up a good point. I did want to ask you, we get so many viewers and ri uh, people writing in telling us what can people do to enforce the quarantine on the visitors? We're still seeing about 100 each day come into Hawaii, but they're not staying in some of the hotels. They're not staying. Well, it's, it's clear. It's a very good uh, point you brought up, uh, Annalisa. Um, many of them are staying at vacation rentals. Uh, so not every one of those hundred or so visitors a day are at the hotel. And the reason why we know this is we're tracking it. Uh, when they come in, the forms are immediately sent uh, to the Hawaii Visitors Convention Bureau, who will call the hotel in advance and say, so-and-so uh, has a reservation at your hotel, they're in town. Uh, and um, when they arrive at the hotel, they're reminded again about the quarantine policy. And beforehand, uh, our hotels are encouraged to let these folks know who still want to uh, honor, uh, I should say, who still want to come to Hawaii, they tell them this is not the Hawaii you're going to experience because we're basically shut down. We really are trying to discourage you from coming. If you insist on coming, know that there are 14 days that you are going to be quarantined. So I feel pretty confident that within the hotel facilities, if they're, being, uh, if they're staying there for 14 days, it almost guarantee that we are following because when we hear things that may be going awry, and if it's because of a, a visitor that's here that doesn't want to follow the rules and wants to be a little kolohe and see if they can sneak out, mm -hmm. um, well, we have the strong support, not just of the security within the hotels, but if they find that it's more than they can handle, they will call the police department. And we know in Kauai, uh, they've been very active, thanks to Mayor Kawakami here in Honolulu. Uh, they've stepped up efforts in that regard too. Uh, and it's happening uh, throughout uh, the, the state. We also know now they're starting to move into the vacation rental area. Uh, the three mayors have made it very clear uh, that this is either illegal and you cannot book a vacation rental anymore during this period. Uh, and uh, you know, making it clear that this is not the time because there's no guarantee when they're staying in a home, it's a vacation rental, whether they're adhering to the 14 day quarantine policy. You can kind of figure that out with the hotels because what we're doing too is we're calling your room uh, mm. to make sure that you're there. And if you're not answering the room, then someone from the hotel uh, will send their security up uh, to figure out whether you're in that room or if you've left the room. And if you have, get back uh, to, uh, uh, to us, basically, and then we will then uh, also uh, take action by calling uh, HPD or wherever that uh, the, uh, infraction is taking place to that uh, local police department and ask them mm -hmm. for help to remove them. If they have uh, penalties or fines, whatever, we'd like for them to also uh, put that into action. So oh, that's it's, good. Pretty, it's, it's, it's a pretty, uh, pretty clear policy at the hotel level, but we cannot speak for the other lodging sectors uh, that are still uh, housing uh, these folks that are coming for whatever reason at a, at a difficult time to be here and they want to be here, um, that needs to uh, be better enforced and even set some uh, heavy fines uh, for mm -hmm. those that are going to uh, blatantly disregard quarantine policy because for some of those vacation rentals as we are in neighborhoods, uh, yeah. and that's where uh, you know, we're telling our local people to please, please, let's all do this together. The sooner we all adhere to rules of social distancing, uh, sanitary conditions, wearing masks, uh, and all of that, uh, it will be uh, a shorter ride for us to get through this.
Yeah, well, it's good that you clarified that because a lot of people have been writing in and saying what is being done to enforce this and they're worried about it. So at least from your side in the hotel and hospitality industry, it's being done. But uh, Mufi, thank you so much for taking the time and giving us an update on the programs that are uh, you know, helping our residents, helping our community in this very difficult time. Uh, aloha to you. Well, aloha to you too. And thank you for giving us an opportunity to explain and enunciate a policy and a program. And I can't say enough, again, about all the people who are participating in this Hotel for Heroes. Uh, it's just a wonderful uh, indication of the aloha that uh, they continue to have and we need to have for each other.